Chapter 10, Mishnah 4. The Torah refers to the Malachos of Shabbos as calculated labor, from which it is derived that a person is liable for performing a Malacha only if he intended to do it. Thus, if one intended to perform a, permis a permissible action and accidentally performed a Malacha instead, he is exempt from liability. For example, he picked up a vegetable from the ground thinking that it was already plucked, but in fact it was still attached to the ground, so he unwittingly committed the malacha of reaping. The exemption is called, this exemption is called mit asek, one who commits an unwilling act. See the general introduction. The following Mishnah teaches that in certain cases this exception applies even if one did intend to do the malacha, but accidentally performed it in a way that is inferior to the one he had planned. We now turn to the words of the Mishnah. If one intends to transfer an item suspended in front of him, but before he completes the transfer, it slides around and goes behind him, he is exempt from liability. Carrying an article in front of one's body is better than carrying it behind one's back, because one can more easily guard and protect that which is in front of him. Therefore, if one intends to carry something in front of him, but it shifts around to the back, the transfer is completed in the manner inferior to the one he planned. One is exempt for such a malacha because it is not calculated labor. However, in the opposite case, where one intends to transfer an item suspended behind him, but before he completes the transfer, it slides around and goes in front of him, he is liable. Since the resulting act is better than one he had intended, he is liable for it. The Mishnah cites an exception to the previous rule. However, in truth, they said, if a woman wearing an underskirt transfers something that is attached to the skirt, she is liable whether the item slides in front of her or behind her. This is because a woman knows that it is normal for an underskirt to turn around when she walks and that any attached item will move with it. Since she knew that the item could move to the front or the back, it, has, it is as though she intended to carry it in either position. Therefore, even if it was originally in front of her and moved to the back, she could not be exempt from liability on the grounds that this was not her intent. The next Tana extends the previous ruling to the king's mail carriers, who would carry royal letters in tubes slung from their necks. Rabbi Yehuda says, even those who receive royal letters to deliver are liable for transferring, regardless of whether the tube in which the letters are, letters are held slides in front or behind them. As in the previous case, a letter carrier knows that it is normal for his tube to move around when he runs. Since he realized this from the start, he is liable even if the tube slips behind him.